All right. Let's take a look Paul at Paul Montgomery out, put Gibbs in. Let me see here. Seahawks, and uh, take them out, take that out. Running back, Gibbs. So that leaves us 9,700. Um, Gibbs is 6,800. That leaves us 2,900 to spend on defense, which would get us the Titans. I like that better. That would get us the, the Lions, Eagles, and Titans, but that leaves us with $200 left over. Yeah, that's fine. He's going to catch more passes. Oh, yeah. 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 All right, so that's uh, Derek Carr at quarterback, Cam Akers at running back, Jameer Gibbs at running back, Chris Olave, George Pickens, and Brandon Ayuk at wide nice. receiver. That's a nice that's group. A by low trio. Yeah. Uh, Brock Bowers at tight end with Jordan Mason in the flex and the Titans defense at 2,700 working against Malik Willis. Yeah, and the Titans D has been good. Yeah. I mean, that's not been the Their problem Their offense at has all. been the issue. It's been horrendous. Yeah. And I was talking about this on another podcast this morning, like, you just pay all this money for Snead, you know, like, I might put 10 in the box and just play cover zero. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm not letting you guys run on me like you did yeah. the Colts, no matter You're what. You're going to have to complete passes, and we know because you've been here for the last two years that you can't. And you can't. And I know how to get in your head. I, Tennessee D was vastly underpriced to me in this. Yeah. Especially all right. with the knowledge of the quarterback. I'm going to lock it in. Okay. We are locked and loaded. So... That's going to do it for the Fantasy Football Focus, Matt. That's our winning lineup. Again, Derek Boom. Carr, Cam Akers, Jameer Gibbs, Brandon Ayuk, Chris Olave, George Pickens, Brock Bowers, Jordan Mason, and the Titans defense. Works for me. Absolutely. Looks like a winner. Uh, we'll see you on Monday if, if uh, that proves to be the case. He is Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. Matt and I will be back to preview all this week's games right after this. We bleed black and gold. This is the Pittsburgh Steelers Audio Network. You know when you said, come over for the fight? We thought you meant your house. You guys want another round of Bud Lights? Service is better here. And so is the beer. Bud Light is back as the official beer sponsor of UFC. Enjoy responsibly. 2024 Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Spend the bye week on America's best beaches at the Tradewinds Resort on St. Pete Beach. Join host Rob King and black and gold legends Ernie Mills and Darren Perry in St. Pete Clearwater, Florida for a bye week at the beach getaway. The weekend includes black and gold themed get-togethers on the beach, autograph sessions, giveaways, and more. For more information on booking your package at the Tradewinds Resort on St. Pete Beach, visit byweekatthebeach.com. Spend the bye week on America's best beaches at the Tradewinds Resort. Visit byweekatthebeach.com. Plug and reconnect with a long fall weekend in the Laurel Highlands, a preferred vacation destination partner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Embrace sweater weather and enjoy the stunning architecture of Frank Lloyd Wright, a scenic mountain drive, or a challenging bike trail. Think falling leaves, pumpkin festivals, s'mores by the campfire, and stops along an exciting craft beverage trail. Make lasting family memories with a three or four night stay in a cozy cabin. Start planning now at golaurelhighlands.com. Just like coaches and players take a timeout to call the winning play, you must take a timeout and call 811 before you dig deep on your home or business projects. Building a deck? Call 811. Digging for a new pool or fence? Call 811. Stay safe and avoid costly mistakes. This important message is from People's Natural Gas, an essential utilities company. For more information, visit peoples-gas.com slash safety. is The Drive with Dale Lally and Matt Williamson on your 24-7 home of the black and gold. SNR. Steelers Nation Radio. And welcome back. I'm Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson. And, uh, of course, uh, this is The Drive on the Steelers Audio Network, which you can listen to Monday through Friday uh, from 4 to 6 p.m. And uh, also uh, you can follow along on uh, YouTube on the show with the show that comes out around. Been very uh, popular. What time is it around, Tyler? Around 8 o'clock every uh, day? Give or take. Around yeah. 8 o'clock, it show, the new show shows up on uh, on YouTube. A lot of good responses Tyler there. Tyler who gets that out for us on, on uh, YouTube there. We appreciate that. And you can also download the Steelers mobile app and get it on there as well. There so you lots of different places to uh, listen to the show. Of course, you can also follow on anywhere you get your podcasts. We're available. Yep. Spotify, yep. Apple. Sure. Follow us on Twitter. Stuff. We retweet this stuff and put all that stuff out, too. You yeah, know, absolutely. Right? Give us a follow on Twitter. We like that. Uh, or the X Twitter. X like Twitter. Right. Yeah. Uh, anyways, let's take a look at this week's games, Matt. Um, leading off, the team that we just picked defensively to lead off our uh, our fantasy football 
mm-hmm. daily fantasy football team. The Titans at 0-2, hosting the 1-1 Packers. Tennessee favored by two. The over-under is 37.5. I like seeing that. I love the under. <laughs> I love the under in this game. I think they're both going to shorten it like crazy. I don't think you're going to see love. you got to hide Levis. I think he'll take the home team and lay the points. But that I don't feel strong about that Levis part. scares me. Yeah. Maybe, just maybe, at 0-2, could we, could we see Mason Rudolph this week? If he does something remarkably dumb early in the, se- early in the game, then maybe. Yeah. You know, like, if you're throwing... It's, they can't afford to go to 0-3. No. 0 and 3 is scary for yeah. any of these teams, you know, the Ravens and the Bengals, et cetera. I'm going with Green Bay if you're going to give me points. If, if you know, points. It's only two, though. I know, but Two's I just tough. think the coaching advantage greatly favors Green Bay. I, I agree with that. Um, I just don't know that. Uh, they stole one last week. Mm-hmm. House money, like you said the other yeah. day. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they can steal another one. You know, now that you've, now that you've shown Tennessee. How you're going to try to win with Malik Willis? Mm-hmm. I don't know that you can replicate that again. My logic between you know, if I I, I would stay away from the the line. I, I yeah. like the under a lot, but if you believe the under is going to hit, and you're going to give, I'll take points, especially for a better coach. If it team. were more than two, I would I'd be with you. If it were three, even. yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I don't love and I don't love for my purposes here Tennessee's knowledge of Willis. Yeah, you know, yeah. Even now, it's a new staff. If you're looking at a teaser there, and I can get add six onto that, okay. Over three would be real nice. Yeah, anything three over half, three is good. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Colts at zero and two are kind of in a similar situation to the Titans. Like, mm-hmm. I can't afford to go to zero and three. Uh, they host the Bears, who are one and one. Indianapolis favored by a point and a half. The over under forty three and a half. I like the Bears in this game. Bears. Their low line has been a real problem. Caleb hasn't played well, but their defense is solid and they have weapons. And I think Allen will be back, or I mean, they have enough weaponry. I just really dislike where the Colts are. Defensively. Allen won't be back. Actually, he's been declared. Out. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I really don't like where the Colts' defense is at. And a couple things on Richardson. I mentioned they're not designing runs for him, and part of his accuracy problems, he throws the ball too hard. You know, like yeah. the, 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 everything's he, a fastball. When he hits his target, sometimes he knocks him over. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's got the biggest arm going. Take a little something off it. You know? Yeah, that's uh, one thing that I always think of when when people talk about these quarterbacks having big arms. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, they don't know how to throw a touch. Right. I saw it with Joe Milton last year at the Senior Bowl. Hundred percent. He's throwing the ball seventy yards down the field. He tried to complete a pass that was six yards away. Mm-hmm. Couldn't do it. Oh, arm arm talent and arm strength are two different two things. different things. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the two and the Bears. Yeah, I thought the Steelers and the Chargers were the only team or the only game with two two and O teams. It's not true. It's not I, true. I heard that yesterday too. I'm like Vikings and Texans are. Playing. Yeah, the Texans at two and O are at the Vikings at two and O. Maybe people just don't believe that the Vikings are two and O. Uh, Houston, a two point favorite, the over under forty six and a half. If Stroud were a normal young quarterback, I would definitely take that building and Flores. All day long, but I don't think he is. And I think the Texans' D is flying around They'll turn right now. Donald over. Yeah. Stingley on Jefferson, good enough. You know what I mean? He might yeah. not win that matchup. A few will, but he can limit them. I, I, I like Houston in that game. Yeah, I do too. Uh, at 1-1, one and one, the Eagles are at the 2-0 and o Saints. New Orleans favored by two and a half. The over-under 49 and a half. I actually saw it at three and a half yesterday. Wow. And... Took the Eagles. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, tough place to play, and I get all that. I think Philly's, when we look back at the season, Philly's the better team than the Saints. I understand I how I think well so, the too. Their play. defense yeah. is struggling a little bit right now. They don't have the D-line that people think. No, the, which they don't generate the pass rush. Right. Um, they, they've got a bunch of big guys. Jordan Davis doesn't do anything. They don't anymore. rush the passer well. No. Carter's all right, but the rest of them, Graham's gotten old. You yeah. Know, Fletcher Cox has moved on. It's not the same D-line. No. Um but I do think they'll shut down the Saints' running game to a certain degree. Yeah. And if the Saints can't run the ball. I like where the Eagles' offense is at, minus the Brown injury. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you. I just, um, I just think they're the better team if you're to give them points. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, the Broncos at 0-2 are at the Buccaneers at 2-0. Tampa Bay favored by 6.5. The over-under only 40.5. I have no problem laying that number. 
<laughs> I really don't. I don't think Denver's going to score much on the road. I think Sertan versus Evans is great, but Godwin yeah. blows up, and they have other weapons, and Nix looks over his head, and Bowles is really hard to play. Really hard to light him up in their own yeah. building. Yeah, And I still think heat and weather is an issue this time of year. Tampa's not fun to play at right now. Yeah, I just don't think the Broncos are very talented. No, they don't have good players. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, the Panthers at 0-2. Speaking of which, teams yeah. that have no talent are at the Raiders at one and one. Vegas favored by five. The over under thirty nine and a half. I thought this was going to be like a ten point spread. Kind of tells you where the Raiders are at. I still Since like the just, Raiders. I do too. I mean, they. I thought the. the I, I was going to consider actually betting on the the Panthers. I, I thought know the Panthers like, won a game this year. I don't know if they will either. Because I, th I thought it was going to be like 10. <laughs> oh, yeah. They went to Baltimore and won. The Raiders yeah, were you were, really you were good talking and... about, well, you know, the, that's the only thing that gives me any pause. Five's not big enough. Is that the Raiders went to Baltimore and won. Yeah. It, do they have a letdown now against the Panthers after watching them on film all week and going, okay, we're, we're going we're gonna to beat this team. We'll be 2-1. and one. I just don't know that, that Pierce, as a head coach, oh, will allow that to him help either. him. I don't trust him either. Um, it's not like they have a great home field advantage or anything either. Yeah, I just think five. But there won't be many advantage. Panthers fans showing. No, up. <laughs> I'm sure they're not flocking across town all of a sudden either. <laughs> Woo, Panthers! Yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> I'll lay the points, but this is low on my watch list. Yeah, I don't think anybody wants to watch that one. Uh, not even Andy Dalton's uh, wife and family. Yeah. Um, at one and one, the Dolphins are at the two and zero Seahawks. There's a lot of dog games this week. Seattle only giving four. We mentioned this earlier in the show. I can't believe that that's that low a number. Four. Seattle's in a good spot. With Skyler good Thompson, quarter, right? Massive quarter flying back across the country. like you that's can't. The farthest you can't go any farther. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I don't think the defense or O line is very good for Miami, and that's the kind of things you need to lean on now Ugh. against a, a defensive minded coach that throws a lot at you. Uh, I think Seattle wins big in two. Skyler Thompson starts. Jalen Waddle had eight catches for 88 yards. Tyreek Hill had nine for 92. That's total, two games. Total, yeah. 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 Two games. That's, a, that's like one else, game. Right. That's one game's worth of work for those guys right. with, a, with a real quarterback. I just see a lot of horizontal passing to a chance. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what they're And, and throwing the ball to these guys at the line of scrimmage, yeah, you I do think. have to respect that because you can't press them. Sure. But you can tackle the catch. Yeah. Make a big play. <clears throat> You're on Neither your own, one of these right. guys are real dynamic. They're not going to run through tackles. No, you got to get them moving. You know, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I just don't I think know. That's a brutal place to play. I don't know how Miami scores a bunch. Of, I don't yeah. know how they score. Seattle fans will be wound up. Yeah. At zero and two, one of the big games of the week, the zero and two Ravens at the one and one Cowboys. Does Baltimore? Uh, Baltimore somehow favored in this game by yeah. one. The over under forty eight and a half. I'm taking the Cowboys. I'm taking the Ravens. I'll take the team and I don't home. feel strong about it. I really worry about Parsons from my stand on this. That's bet. why. That's you one know, of the big right. reasons why. Who, how, who's blocking him? Right. I don't like Dallas's run defense. And this one just comes down to, and I hope I'm wrong, but I hope I just can't imagine chatting with you on Monday, going, "Well, the Steelers are three and zero, and the Ravens are zero and three. Like that, that just seems crazy. To Do you me. think the Cowboys are going to be one and two? I don't think the Ravens will be zero and three. I'm, I'm trusting Harbaugh on this one in Lamar. They are giving I, I up the me, most. I'm not betting it. They're giving up the most passing yards in the league. Yeah. Hamilton may not play. May not play. Um, their first round draft pick <clears throat> isn't going to play. He's got a yeah. concussion. I, I just think that Baltimore's in a bad spot right now. I guarantee you, anytime Rosengarten is in a game, and he's be out there a lot. He's, and he's going to be out there a lot. He's getting Micah Parsons. Oh, yeah. And there's even talk that Rosengarden might become the full-time right tackle and Macari becomes, gets Falele off the field because Falele has been Falele that bad. Stinks. I mean, Parsons will dance right around him, too. Yeah. So I heard an analyst today talking about the Ravens. I thought they said it really well. They said when Ricard isn't out there, and he's not going to play every snap, of mm -hmm. course. He's a 300-pound fullback. They don't have a dirty work guy. Yeah. The tight ends are... Finesse. Yeah, they're you know, receivers. Zay is finesse. Yeah. They don't have a Heinz Ward to block and get you nine on third and eight. You know what I mean? Like, it's a, it's not a normal Ravens toughness we type team. We said that at the, in the draft, draft. When, yep. they, when they drafted those guys. The first like, two these, picks. These yep. are not typical Ravens picks. Right. They're not, like, they're not spitting nails. They're not people. Right. 
I don't think the Steelers were like, oh, shucks, they took Rosengard. Yeah. Because you know, he was our type of guy. I, I don't think that's true. Or Wiggins. Yeah. Right. But so. their skill guys are finesse. Yeah. It's it's troublesome. I'm betting on Harbaugh, though. And they can't they can't block it up when they know it. Right. Right, right, right. Lamar has to be Superman. And I just... Uh, the only thing that gives me pause in this is knowing Lamar's record against NFC That's teams. part of it. I meant to yeah. mention that, too. But it's in, if this game were in Baltimore, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd be picking the Ravens. I just don't understand how they're giving points on the road. Yeah. Yeah. To I, what I, I think you. is a good football team. I don't think Dallas will run the ball well, though. But I think yeah. Dallas knows who they are. And Dak is a stabilizing force. Yeah. Lamb Same. will do well. Yeah. I and mean, Lamb was number one on the DFS lineup. I mean, prices. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't touch it, though. No, I, I'm right. not going to. No, I would stay away I from it. I wouldn't watch it, but I don't want to put anything on it. Uh, at 1-1, one and one, a surprising 1-1, one and one, the 49ers are at the 0-2, a surprising 0-2 Rams. San Francisco favored by 7, the over-under 44 and a half. There's five or six that I don't think the numbers add up, which probably means I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I get that. But I think the Niners win this by 100. Yeah. I mean, there's... They got embarrassed. They don't. How often do they lose two in a row? I know they have some injuries, but nothing like the Rams. Other than Stafford, what's the strengths of the Rams right now? They don't have one. And, and then you know they have that rock paper scissor thing in the NFC West. Well, Niners have crushed Rams. Yeah. And, you know, and they usually lose to Seattle, but uh, I think they blow them out. Yeah. How, yeah. they, how they block up Bosa and if Warner. you're really worried about the seven points, you can always tease that one down to, yeah. to one. I started six and a half yeah. actually, so it's at seven. It's crazy. It's yeah. at seven now, so yeah. people are betting it up. Uh, I'm with you. I think the 49ers just destroy I think them, stomp them. Yeah. Uh, the one and one Lions are at the one and one Cardinals. Detroit favored by three. The over under fifty one and a half. The biggest one of the weekend. I don't feel strong about it, but I'm going to take the Lions. Yeah. I don't think Arizona's got a great home field advantage. I think you just play the over in this one. Yeah. I do think the Lions will run the ball a lot, but I don't. I still don't think that will be a lack of they points. They might be really successful running they the ball. They might be really <laughs> like successful at it. 20 yards at a time. I think the Lions' D is noticeably better than the Cardinals. Yeah. And I saw it today. Uh, Kelvin Beecham added to the uh, uh, Cardinals' really? uh, injury report. He was already starting because somebody their regular He's right tackle was right hurt. Now, right. So now they're on their third string right tackle. I'm sure Hutchinson will line up on that side mm -hmm. over and over now. That'll yeah. be troublesome. Yep, I didn't know that. Uh, at 2-0, and the Sunday night game, the Chiefs are at the 1-1 one and -one Falcons. Kansas City giving 3.5, the over under 46.5. I like the home team. Do you? I don't like either, but I'm taking the Chiefs. I think Chris Jones will cause problems, and Mahomes was down last week. I can't imagine that picking up. They're, they don't cover as often as people think. No, they don't. They absolutely don't. What do I you think? think? They, I think they might win the game, but I'll take the three. I and don't half like points. the half at all. Yeah, and I do think Atlanta's better than what Steeler fans saw. I'm going to take Kansas City. Bijan's going to give them problems. Bijan's going to give them problems. Bijan's really good. How many Chiefs fans are going to be there? Night game. It'll be a good, good I bet number. there's a good contingency. Although I'll say this, I think Atlanta sold out its season tickets this right, year. Right, right. And they just, they're coming off a big win over the Eagles on Monday night. This might be the game their fans show up for, not sell their tickets. Maybe they sold them to Steelers fans like, hey, look, i got to pay for my season tickets, and I can do that this week. I mean, I want to go out and see Patrick Mahomes play. There was a lot of optimism in week one, too. I, I'm, I'm not even... Picking it because I think there's a lot of Chiefs fans there. I will say this: it is back to back, half, not three and a half, back to back but. night games for for uh, Cousins, who traditionally uh, doesn't perform well. Great at those. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going with Kansas City. I worry that Kelsey's Shot. Hit, hitting the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's going to have his hand, hands full this week. I mean, they yep. got two good safeties. Well, yep, absolutely. So, the other thing that kind of has me picking the Falcons: Sue Mataya. Problem. Is a, a problem. Yep, yep, yep. Both of their tackles are a problem. Absolutely. And no and, doubt are. Yeah, the Falcons can now rush the passer a little bit. I'm sure that they're going to come out trying to run the ball, but they don't have Pacheco either. Yeah. You know? I mean, they're going to have a backup all yeah, carry. Yeah. Right, right. So some some injury issues there. At 0-2, the last game of the week. No, actually, actually, there's two Monday nighters. Two Monday nighters, yeah. yeah. Uh, the 0-2 Jaguars are at the 2-0 and Bills. Buffalo favored by only five. In the over under 45 and a half. So we had a conversation on my podcast earlier that I could see starting to get questions Monday or Tuesday is Jacksonville going to be the first team to fire their coach? Like, doesn't it sort of smell like that? Like, they're 
not living up to expectations. You go to Buffalo and lose by 20, and it's like, what are we doing here? You know? Yeah. Do I trust the, that group to get it right and fix problems? You not trust really? that ownership not to make that move? Right, right, yeah. right. It just kind of has that smell about it. I, I'm going to take the Bills. Yeah, I'm taking the Bills as well. And the final game of the weekend, the one and one Commanders. Thank God there are two Monday night games this week yeah, because they're great. at the zero uh, and two Bengals. Cincinnati favored by seven and a half. The over under forty seven and a half. I still like the Bengals. No, I do too. I do too. I, I think getting Hendricks in blocks going to be a problem. That defense coordinator can throw a lot at a young quarterback. Although I think Daniels is playing pretty well. Higgins is coming back. Washington's defense is just really atrocious. Bad. Burrow doesn't even have to be his sharpest to rip yeah. them up. You know, I think Chase blows up. I think Moss has a good game this week. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. I so. wish there wasn't that half there but for an 0-2 team, but I think since he gets it right. Yeah, since he's at home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Monday Night Football. Burrow is 4-0 and outright and 3-1 and against the spread Monday on Monday nights. Really? Yes. So I, I think they kind of play. He likes that big stage. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I think they blow him out. I do too. Yeah. That's this week's slate of games, Matt. Cool. So a couple of good games in there and some real dogs. There are. And there were five or six where I think the spread's wrong, which yeah, if I get four During of those the season, six. Right, Vegas right, right, right. Is still trying to figure some stuff out. Miami doesn't make sense to me. There's a couple of them that don't make sense yeah. to me. Um, we'll see how much, well, we'll talk about this game next, the Steelers game. How much that moves if uh, it ends up Justin uh, Herbert is not playing. I Matt, if it now, moves even now with him just being flat out questionable. Potentially. Whole, everyone knows now. You know? Yeah, potentially. Uh, but we'll talk about that game and give our picks on it when we return. He is the Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. Your home for the Steelers. This is the Pittsburgh Steelers Audio Network. It's Greg Wolfley for my friends at Clearview Federal Credit Union. The Clearview team is here to help you score your financial goals and support our community. Clearview is always upping their game for those in need. Through Touchdowns for Hope, these pros will donate $500 to the Light of Life Rescue Mission for every black and gold touchdown scored this season. Now that's what makes a real winning team. Visit clearviewfcu.org slash touchdown to learn more and open an account today. That's clearviewfcu.org slash touchdown. Just like coaches and players take a timeout to call the winning play, you must take a timeout and call 811 before you dig deep on your home or business projects. Building a deck? Call 811. Digging for a new pool or fence? Call 811. Stay safe and avoid costly mistakes. This important message is from People's Natural Gas, an essential utilities company. For more information, visit peoples-gas.com slash safety. Grab your lucky spot on the couch, because traditions make Sunday easy to enjoy. Bud Light, easy to Sunday, easy to enjoy. Bud Light is the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Enjoy responsibly. 21 plus, copyright 2024, Anheuser-Busch, Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Spend the bye week on America's best beaches at the Tradewinds Resort on St. Pete Beach. Join host Rob King and black and gold legends Ernie Mills and Darren Perry in St. Pete Clearwater, Florida for a bye week at the beach getaway. The weekend includes black and gold thin get-togethers on the beach, autograph sessions, giveaways, and more. For more information on booking your package at the Tradewinds Resort on St. Pete Beach, visit byweekatthebeach.com. Spend the bye week on America's best beaches at the Tradewinds Resort. Visit byweekatthebeach.com. This is The Drive with Dale Lally and Matt Williamson on your 24-7 home of the black and gold. SNR, Steelers Nation Radio. And welcome back. I am Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson. And uh, Matt, it is time, after all the talking that we've done this week, it is time for us to pick what we think is going to happen in this week's Steelers game, Chargers at 2-0, and at, at the Steelers 2-0. and When this came out, the Steelers favored by 1.5. I just looked, it is now 3. So wow. the line has moved um, in terms of what uh, Vegas thinks is going to happen with Justin Herbert. The over-under is 35.5. Wow. It's a low, that's it's, about as low as you'll see. I've seen some 33s and things of that nature in the past. Yeah. We're this used is, to low over. This low is over good weather game, here. though. This, good like, weather those game, games right. are like, oh, there's going to be a snowstorm hitting, or a, I wonder a, if that's a hurricane. Too. I don't. I haven't paid attention to the over under. But that week, goes right? down. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it did or already had or yeah. will. You know, right? Um, let me go first. 
It is now. Uh, it's still 35 and a half. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, when I thought Herbert was definitely going to play, I had the Steelers winning this 16-13. And the spread was one and a half at that point. You're smiling like you had the same score. I had the same exact score. Did you really? Which happened to us a couple of years ago. For you regular listeners, you know yeah. this one. This is bizarre. We went yeah. like seven straight weeks with the exact same score picked. We had to even like, <laughs> after a while, we were writing them down and be like, I'm not lying. Look, this is what I had All right. before we said it. So no, I, I'm going to stick with that. I mean, like for things that I actually have to write a prediction for, I took 16, 13 Steelers. I'll feel better about it if Herbert's obviously not involved. I, I don't see a lot of points. I think the Steelers defense is just by far the best group out there. I think the Steelers will run on the interior in particular yeah. quite well. I think Justin Fields might make a big play or two more than he has. And I think Pickens goes bonkers. I mean, I don't know what kind of answer they have for Pickens. And their corners aren't even bad. No, they're just tiny. Yeah, and yeah. That, that's right. the thing that stands out to me about, about this Chargers team is that they don't have – we've seen in the last few years – all these big corners coming mm -hmm. into the league to combat the bigger wide receivers sure. that are out there, the more athletic wide receivers, and they don't have any of those guys. No, they don't. They're all smaller 5'10", 5'11", cornerbacks that, while good, just I don't know that they can – Pickens is just going to box those guys out or mm -hmm. out-jump them for the football. I think they'll do fine Even against, Van Jefferson will, is, is a bigger receiver. I was about to say, I think they'll do fine against the other Steeler receivers, yeah. but not that guy, the way he's been looking on tape and in person – I think they're going to design a lot for him. When they throw, it's going to go his way. I also don't love their middle-of-the-field coverage for Fryermuth, who I think will be the second-leading receiver. Yeah. And those tackles are really good, but even if that's a wash against Watt and Highsmith, it's still, which, uh, you know, uh, what are you doing with Cam? It's, and, either, a, it's either a quarterback who is, who is injured. Yeah. Or it's a quarterback who's very inexperienced. Or subpar. Or yeah. subpar, yeah. and you've got that pass rush in that building. Right. With Renegade playing and the terrible towels swirling and the you know, opening day crowd. It's a big ask. And Quentin Johnson's been important to them by default. I don't know if he does anything if Porter locks him down. You yeah. know, so penalties could obviously be a problem. Turnovers. Turnovers, 100%. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that. Maybe Fields turns into a pumpkin and takes a bunch of sacks and turns the ball over a bunch, and the Steelers have taken a lot of penalties. That keeps up, and they lose. And they can't stop the run, and Dobbins is running free left and right. That could happen. I don't feel super certain about it, but the more Herbert news comes out, the better I like the Steelers will be 3-0. and Does it bother you if Troy Fatanu can't go in this game? Yes. Absolutely. Because their edge guys are really good, and it'll be a test for him either way. Yeah. But I thought he played really well in, in week one. See, I, th I think with, with Broderick Jones, um, he might be just a little bit ticked off at how he played last hope. week. I would hope. And, right. and a little embarrassed. Out, yeah, yeah, a little embarrassed. Yeah, and, yeah. and comes out and says, hey, look, that's not me. I mm -hmm. think he comes out and has a good game. Because Wouldn't he's, shock me. he's got the talent. Yes. You know, if that got him refocused a little bit, going out and putting out. If, if, if the giving up the sacks in the preseason didn't get him refocused, mm -hmm. Maybe getting benched, and then when you got the opportunity to go in there and play, yeah, and playing like that might just have done that. I mean, um, who knows? I mean, the the glass half full of this whole situation is it might be exactly what Jones needs. Yeah, you know, and he he shuts down Bosa and Mac, and you're like, that's why. I we just don't know how much the Steelers are going to have to throw. That's the thing. Yeah, like are Bosa and Mac going to be that big of a factor if you're only throwing the ball twenty times? Mm -hmm. And I think if 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 it is a compromised Justin Herbert or Easton Stick, or you know, if they decide to go with with uh, Taylor Heineke, Steelers can play the same way that they have been playing. Yeah, and and the Chargers want to play that way anyways. Yeah, I mean, again, I just think the Steelers are better at it. They've been doing it longer. They did against better teams. Yeah, and I think they have fewer holes on the roster. They know how they want to play, and they've been playing that way for more than a year. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they absolutely. will run the football. They've got you know just the better. And if you go from a pretty major quarterback disadvantage to a quarterback advantage. Yeah. You know, like, that's one thing I wasn't counting on, you yeah. know, for this. Um, we had thrown out earlier in the week about six offensive line sets. Does that get scrapped if Photonic can't um, play? I think you can still do some of that if you really, really... I mean, you, you obviously, if you... You know, with this injury happening on a Friday, mm -hmm. if you were going to do that stuff, if that was in their game plan, um, maybe you just use a different offensive lineman to do it with. 
because you're yeah. you're not, you're not going to have all your tight ends that you typically have. You don't have Michael Pruitt for this game. Mm -hmm. He's been one of your better blockers out there. You've used him a lot in that tw in those twelve packages. So would that be McCormick? Is he your next best player? He's probably your next best guy up. Um, you probably you're not going to put him out on the end. I wouldn't think. No, maybe you make him the tackle and everyone just bumps one. You and know you what bump, I mean? You know, if it's Broderick Jones, you bump him out and let him be out on yeah. the edge. Yeah, you don't want him edge protecting against Bosa and no, Mac, no. you know, with your outside hand and that kind of stuff. But again, if you force those guys out wider, mm -hmm. you know, if he's got Washington outside of him, yeah. he's still not on the, he's, he's still not the end end. I mean, it's just a different version of 13 personnel yeah. or whatever. You're yeah. with a bigger body. Because you know I, what you, I both teams. with Jones yeah. as a six guy, of course. Yeah. You know, I always want to be a six, six tackle type, you know. But he's a good run blocker. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I, I don't. I wouldn't have a problem with it. It's not like you're going to throw out of that package. I'm sure both coaches are saying or preaching all week. The most physical team is going to win this without game. without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, there's that's how those coaches are wired. I right? think. I think Alandon Roberts has a big game. I could see that too. I, I think, think he's very it. impactful in this. Yeah. Game. And if they have backup quarterbacks, Ooh. I could see some turnovers too. Yeah. You know, without question. We'll see. Uh, I think it's going to be a good game. The Herbert situation's looming huge right now. Huge. Yeah. I mean, it's massive. In fact, I, I was with you 16-13. If he doesn't play, I might go Steelers 20-10. to 10. I was leaning something like that, too, because I could see a better defensive or better field position, an extra turnover, yeah. something like that. Again, I, I still think Harbaugh does something wacky, but maybe he does two things wacky and it ends doesn't up being work, backwards. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the terrible tiles are waving and they're teeing off on Easton stick with four minutes left. You One know thing I mean? to keep an eye on Matt, in this game. Yeah. The chargers have had four kick returns against them this year. Yeah. You even, that. even last week against Carolina Now Carolina didn't run them back, mm -hmm. but Dicker, the kicker, mm -hmm. um, a couple of his kicks only made it a couple of yards into the end zone. Yeah. 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 If he does, if he kicks one of those, a Cordero Patterson, he's going to try it. He's going to bring it out. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm excited to see it. Yeah. I hope he gets, Two or three return attempts would be great. Yeah. I mean, even if he gets one, yeah. um, that guy can change a game in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And that's why teams aren't kicking to him right now. And special teams favors the Steelers. Yeah. I mean, uh, across, the, the, across the board. And which kicker do you trust more to bang that 50-yarder to win it, you know? It ain't Dicker the kicker. It ain't Dicker the kicker. <laughs> Not against Boz. <laughs> so, 3 no would be really something. It would be something, and then you'd be heading to uh, Indianapolis to play a... Scuffling uh, football team. I, I don't like where they're at right now. The no. Colts. But we'll dig into them. Got to get this one first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's they not going to be one, easy. No, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Harbaugh type it's, coach team. It's going to be a bare knuckle fight. Yeah, 100%. So it'll be fun. I'll enjoy watching it. Yeah. And, uh, well, we'll be we'll talking be about on it Monday. on Monday. Of course, you can hear Matt and I both on the – I'll be on the pre-game -pre show, the full yeah, two hours. You get, today, the, right. you get the week off this week, but you can also hear Matt and I on the regular pre-game show. We do back-to-back -back hits with uh, – with Mike Pursuta and Jerry Dulek and, and Bob Labriola and Missy's on there and all yeah, everybody. Yeah, right before me. Yeah, so uh, you get to hear us on there uh, previewing this game as well. Uh, but that's going to do it for our show today and for the week. So for my par partner, Matt Williamson, for Justin Miller here on site, keeping us on the air. For Tyler, who keeps us uh, Doing a bang looking up, good on, on the video here, Tyler Vittmeyer. I am Dale Lolly. We thank you for listening to this edition of The Drive on the Steelers Audio Network. Steelers football happens here. The Pittsburgh Steelers Audio Network. Spend the bye week on America's best beaches at the Tradewinds Resort on St. Pete Beach. Join host Rob King and black and gold legends Ernie Mills and Darren Perry in St. Pete Clearwater, Florida for a bye week at the beach getaway. The weekend includes black and gold themed get-togethers on the beach, autograph sessions, giveaways, and more. For more information on booking your package at the Tradewinds Resort on St. Pete Beach, visit byweekatthebeach.com. Spend the bye week on America's best beaches at the Tradewinds Resort. Visit byweekatthebeach.com. At Northwest Bank, we're here for what's next. The next one to go off to college someday, thanks to smart college savings plans. The next place to fill with love and laughter, with more mortgage options for first-time buyers. Even the next thing you can't go without, like savings accounts with even more competitive rates. So whatever's next for you, we'll help you get there. Northwest Bank, for what's next. Visit Northwest.com, member FDIC, equal housing lender. 317. Hunt. Score big this season at Don's Appliances. From game day feasts to post-game cleanup, we've got you covered. 
Don's has the region's largest selection of in-stock appliances from brands like Whirlpool and Maytag. Because when it comes to kitchen and laundry appliances, we know how to play to win. Plus, the big box stores can't beat our free next day delivery and guaranteed lowest prices. Visit donsappliances.com, where black and gold fans shop for appliances. Welcome to the Steelers Preview Show on WDVE Pittsburgh. Brought to you by your neighborhood Ford store. The F-150 is the official truck of the Pittsburgh Steelers. By Brian Patton and Associates, it's all about the benefits. And by the Steelers Pro Shop. Get it direct from the team at shop.steelers.com. And now here are your hosts, Merrill Hodge, Matt Williamson, and Mike Prezuda. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Steelers Preview right here on your Steelers flagship 102.5. DVE and the Steelers Audio Network. I'm Mike Pursuta, joined as always on these Thursday night parties by Matt Williamson yeah. of uh, the Steelers Audio Network and mm -hmm. Steelers.com. Uh, our buddy Merrill Hodge, our factor back, will be joining us for segment number two as we get you ready for the home opener, the Steelers and the Chargers Sunday at Acrisure Stadium. And Matt, uh, the news that uh, everybody was probably waiting for uh, came out a while ago. Uh, Russell Wilson limited in practice again today for the Steelers. Uh, all arrows pointing to Justin Fields getting another start. Yeah, and I don't think this should come as a huge shock. They definitely are not rushing him back. I get the impression next week has a pretty strong chance to uh, get Wilson back in the lineup. And if it were me, I would immediately insert him when he was ready. But we'll get another game of Fields and... Yeah, we'll see. I think Fields has played well. I mean, I don't think he's swept anyone off their feet, though. Uh, nor do I, but uh, he's not turned the ball over, it's and uh, he has walked off the field a winner both times, which is the yeah, object right, right. of the exercise. He certainly <laughs> sounded uh, today uh, like a guy who is expecting to start on Sunday. Justin Fields asked after practice today if uh, he came to Pittsburgh to kind of reboot or restart his career and if he did how that's been going so far i think it's definitely a blessing being here um, you know it's kind of bittersweet when i first you know, got here but you know i was happy to come to an organization like this and you know i couldn't even be more happier now so i'm um, just glad i get the opportunity to uh, go out there sunday and leave my teammates uh, onto the field and uh, hope to come out with a good, with a good win. glad i get the opportunity to go out there sunday and lead my teammates this will be the third such opportunity, and uh, it's got a lot of people wondering if uh, this might get to the point where Fields gets <laughs> mm -hmm. a whole bunch of opportunities. Russ, is there any concern that the longer you're inactive, the depth chart could change? No, I'm just focused on, on me every day. I just focus on me being fully healthy, and you know, I have full confidence in our football team, and that's really what, what really matters to me. Russell Wilson, uh, not uh, worried that he could lose this no. through inactivity. You said a moment ago, Matt, you would play him when he's healthy. I would. I would play him when he's healthy. But yeah. at what point, is there a point where they get to 4-0, and 5-0, and and you start right. thinking, you know what? It's a good problem to have. It's working the way it's working. It's working the way it's working. I mean, when I was saying that just a minute ago, I was saying in the back of my mind, well, what would Fields have to do Sunday to change that opinion. You know, if Wilson's ready to roll during practice post Chargers, what would Fields have to do to say, well, maybe we'll go back to you? And probably something that, not that he's incapable of, but is out of the stratosphere would be my answer to that. I mean, really dominate on the ground, not turn the ball over again, which he's been phenomenal at. His accuracy percentage is way up than his Bears days. I mean, so he's he's become somewhat of a different player, but it's only been two games stretched, too. And it's only been one touchdown in two games. Yeah, and for, there's that. Right. For the offense. And, You're right. You know, you know, penalties, hey, they're penalties. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times they're critical to the result of the play. Oh, <laughs> that, that would have been a touchdown if there wasn't holding. It also might have been a sack. It might have been a sack, holding. fumble, return for a touchdown. You right, know, you're right. Yeah. specifically the 51 yard uh, touchdown mm -hmm. to George Pickens, which was a gorgeous throw. Oh, I that mean, was a heck of a play. Like, it's a shame that didn't count. It, it was, yeah, but, no doubt. But if there's not holding there, I think he's getting tackled. Potentially, or he doesn't get the ball off, or he scrambles, or whatever, or, you know, the, the other Pickens one. Well, if he doesn't pick two players, he yeah. probably isn't wide open in the end zone, too. Might have you know, been at least one illegal. guy right. in yeah. coverage. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, rest of the uh, practice participation report 
for today. Roman Wilson uh, gets upgraded from limited to full. Uh, that also occurred last week, and yeah, yeah. Uh, he didn't get in the lineup yet. Do you have uh, any hope that he sees the lineup? I, he said he he wants to play. You know, it's not, his, it. not his call. Uh, I'm starting to wonder on him. Uh, the other know, receivers aren't exactly lighting it up. No, uh, but how much time can a rookie miss? And again, this, this goes all the way back to the first padded practice of training camp. Right. And I mean, then, you know, he's been working his way back the last couple of weeks. But As you know, coaches are about trust and how do yeah. you trust. You know, that's going to be a hard thing to gain. That's a tough one there. And uh, Isaac Samalo did not practice for the second consecutive day, so uh, it doesn't uh, appear as if he's going to be getting a helmet on Sunday. You never know because he's a veteran, but... That sounds uh, highly unlikely. B- but maybe next week. I mean, that's not out of the question from what I understand. Yeah, for the Chargers. Much different story for them. Uh, quarterback Justin Herbert, ankle, didn't practice yesterday, limited today. Sounds like he's trending toward playing, but I wonder, yeah. will he be affected? Right. And Dale and I had a really good conversation in the drive about this because, don't forget, he had plantar fasciitis. I don't know if it's the same foot or not. I have no idea. But that's something I bet he still feels as well. Kept him out of camp about three weeks. Yeah, and there was a lot of talk. Is he going to be ready for week one? He hasn't looked great despite being 2-0. and He's missed some throws, and I wonder if his lower body is bugging him. Safety, uh, Aloy Gilman, one of their starters uh, mm-hmm. on the back end, limited for a second consecutive day. And uh, edge rusher Joey Bosa, hip, limited for a second consecutive day. Gilman didn't play last Sunday against uh, Carolina. Uh, Bosa did. Uh, mm-hmm. Bosa probably, you know, working through what he's got to work through. Gilman's a quality player, though. I mean, he's and a... Legit starting safety. You that, know. that would be a loss. Yeah. Uh, the, the remarkable thing about this game, Matt, is that uh, Jim Harbaugh has uh, arrived in Los Angeles and, and taken over. And to me, uh, the Chargers look like uh, what you might expect if the Baltimore Ravens and the University <laughs> of Michigan <laughs> yeah. had a kid. Yeah, and, I, I and mean, with, with Herbert as a quarterback. Right? There's a lot of ex-Ravens coaches. There's a lot of ex-Ravens players. Yes. Um, they are running the ball way more than they are throwing it. They mm-hmm. are running it with great frequency and success as well as frequency. Yes. I mean, they got three number one picks on that offensive line. They have a 300-pound defensive <laughs> lineman who's playing fullback. <laughs> the fullback is crazy, right. They play two tight ends as much as the Steelers do. Mm-hmm. And J.K. Dobbins, 266 rushing yards. Here's all you need to know about J.K. Dobbins. Uh, he averaged 7.7 yards a carry against the Panthers, and his average went down, went down. to 9.9 <laughs> 9, for nine. the season. I mean, he looks like the guy he was coming out of Ohio State. Which was my favorite back in that class. And... It, I, I'm I'm happy for him you know, because he was a really good player that injuries were just the only negative on the guy. I don't know if you know this, but anyone with 500 carries in the history of the game, he now has the best yards per carry average. I you did know, not know that. Yeah, uh, just just these two games have put him over that. I mean, playing for the Ravens helps because Lamar, you know, Gus Edwards had a nice yards per carry average, average too. And he's kind of just a guy, but he's another former Raven we're going to see a lot of. They feel like the Ravens a lot. So I, they have Justin Herbert, but I mean, I, yeah. he hasn't thrown for 150 yards yet. No. His stat lines look like uh, Justin Fields or Kenny Pickett's did last year. Yes. Now, and this is a guy who averaged 275 passing yards and change yeah. in his first four seasons. Yeah. I, I mean, like, even his attempts are down from half, almost 50% almost from what he's used to his whole career up till now. Now, I think... What we have to acknowledge for the Saints and for the Chargers is they got to play the Panthers. I mean, the Panthers are not an NFL team right now. They and looked really bad. I mean, like really bad. Like hard to imagine that's they, they made an NFL Denver team. look competitive. Exactly. Exactly. So that being said, I'm sure the Chargers could have dropped more points on them at the end too, but that was not a challenge playing that, that team. We've got uh, a lot more to get to uh, here on Steelers Preview. We're just getting warmed up, so you're going to want to keep it here. Steelers Preview is brought to you in part by the Steelers Pro Shop. Gear up with the latest game day necessities at the official Steelers Pro Shops. Get the latest sideline apparel, jerseys, terrible towels, authentic memorabilia, and custom exclusives you can only find directly from the team. Visit one of the official Steelers Pro Shops located at Acrisure Stadium, the Grove City Premium Outlets, and the Tanger outlets, you can also gear up online at shop.steelers.com. 
When we come back, it's time to get the ball to the factor back. Merrill Hodge will be joining us as we continue getting ready for the Steelers and the Chargers Sunday at Acrisure Stadium. You're listening to Steelers Preview right here on your Steelers flagship, 102.5 DVE and the Steelers Audio Network. Your home for the Steelers. This is the Pittsburgh Steelers Audio Network. Join former gridiron great Mike Logan for a black and gold wine and watch party on Sunday, September 29th at Black Dog Wine Company. This intimate event provides the chance to watch the game with a former player, ask questions, and gain knowledge on and off the field. Tickets to the event are free and include an appetizer spread, two glasses of wine, and a bottle to take home. Space is extremely limited. Register today at showclicks.com. Keyword, wine and watch. The wine and watch party at Black Dog Wine Company is brought to you by United States Steel, along with S&T Bank. I'm Jamie Bordas. At Bordas & Bordas, we're a proud partner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Why? We understand and share many of the same Pittsburgh values. Toughness. Hard work. Dedication. At the end of the day, the people who count on us care about one thing. Results. That drives us. And it's why we win. Bordas & Bordas. Fighting for justice. Did you know one in eight people, including one in six children, under the age of 18 in southwestern Pennsylvania are food insecure? Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank leverages the power of community to achieve lasting solutions to hunger and its root causes. Working with more than 1,000 partners in its 11-county, Three Rivers region, the food bank is here to ensure everyone in every community has access to the food and resources they need to thrive. If you're in need of food assistance, would like to volunteer or donate, visit pittsburghfoodbank.org. That's pittsburghfoodbank.org. Unplug and reconnect with a long fall weekend in the Laurel Highlands, a preferred vacation destination partner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Embrace sweater weather and enjoy the stunning architecture of Frank Lloyd Wright, a scenic mountain drive, or a challenging bike trail. Think falling leaves, pumpkin festivals, s'mores by the campfire, and stops along an exciting craft beverage trail. Make lasting family memories with a three- or four-night stay in a cozy cabin. Start planning now at GoLaurelHighlands.com. For an extraordinary advantage in sports, you need a game plan. For an extraordinary advantage everywhere else, all you need is AcroSure. With a high-tech human approach to insurance, cybersecurity, and more, AcroSure helps you take care of what you care about. That makes winning easy. See what AcroSure's extraordinary advantage can do for you at AcroSure.com. Back to the Steelers Preview Show on DVE. Welcome back. Mike Pursuta and Matt Williamson getting you ready for the Steelers and the Chargers Sunday at Acrisure Stadium right here on your Steelers flagship, 102.5 DVE and the Steelers Audio Network. Time now to welcome in our factor back, Merrill Hodge, joining us as he always does. And Merrill, uh, I know we got a lot to talk about as it relates to the Steelers and the Chargers, but I got to start with uh, my tape review of the Chargers and the Carolina Panthers. Oh, man. Five plays into the game, there was a flag thrown for illegal hands to the face. Oh, uh, I know where and you're going now. And it was thrown on <laughs> the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Jadavion Clowney. I saw that, and I immediately thought of you, Merrill. Man, I love it. They actually, later in the game, did you see they just started dropping him into coverage? I'm like, that's how, I'm like, that team's a mess already this week, too. Have you seen a team that bad board, in recent right? memory? Yeah. No, no. No, I mean, it's sure really. If I, if I rack my brain. Not I competitive. If I rack my brain. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, and they had, <laughs> they've only had a year to, well, that, well, listen, we, we can do a whole show on that on that team, on that <laughs> and what they've done and the decisions they've made. But that that's going to haunt them for for years. All right. So before we let that go, should I be wary of Carolina now this week because you you always worry about a professional who's been embarrassed, or are there <laughs> some professionals who are just destined to continue being embarrassed? Yeah. Well, based on well, you know, I'll tell you this: the one bright spot they you know benching Bryce Young is a good move. I think made some. That gives them some hope offensively. Yeah. You know, they can do some things. They're not going to be as limited. And what's unfortunate for Bryce Young, and he, you know, he didn't bring this on himself. I mean, anybody would want to be the first round overall pick in the National Football League, but his just limited skill set is just 
it just it doesn't transition to the National Football League. It just doesn't. And no matter how hard he works or what he does, he's going to be 5'9". He's not going to change from 5'9". And that is always going to be an arduous challenge, no matter who coaches him, in how that you can function offensively consistent enough to, to, win, to win and win consistently, let alone a championship. Does watching that game make it difficult to really get a good bead on the Chargers? A little bit. Yeah. You know, a little bit. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I watched the first two games and, you know, and the Raiders weren't, you know, the juggernaut, you know, they played so much better against Baltimore. So, you know, they didn't, they haven't played two great offenses. And I'm not saying the Steelers are a great offense right now either. You know, they, they are, I think a little better than the two that we just talked about other than the Raiders. I think they get better. They got better quarterback play there, you know, than the other two. I mean, of the two, they got the best quarterback play, and you know he does. He knows how to play the game. You know, he's not elite, but he he knows how to play, and he knows how to play that position. So, between the both, the both of them, though, I think I got a good feel for what it comes down to. I think they're the box players. Listen, they're edge players. You know, we talked about this on the morning show. I I think this game could be like a an edge game. I mean, if you want to watch yeah. who's the best edge players, you can you, you get them all in one arena. I mean, in combination, I can't think of two better. I mean, a combination of four better, quite honestly. I guess there's four of them. That uh, you don't see that often, you know, where those dynamic things enter enter a game. But their edge rushers are incredible. Steelers are incredible. So um, the Chargers do have better better tackles than, than did Seattle. They, they got a better chance of, you know, dealing with them and, you know, keeping them at bay than the first two opponents. Well, let's talk about that. Uh, I, I agree with you. I think that's a highly compelling matchup. I'll I'll be at the game Sunday. I may have my binoculars trained on the uh, two offensive edges, no matter who has the ball, and, and just watch it that way. But uh, is there a favorable matchup, T.J. Watt against anybody, Bosa against uh, Troy Fautano making his second career start Khalil Mack against anybody how do you, who's got the edge edge <laughs> well listen um either one of those guys you know can give a rookie a problem Fatanu I will say this though you know I, I, he's fundamentally so much better than Jones just so, you know from feet hips to hands just so much better um you know he gets a little now listen you know I didn't realize he had not played right tackle so that's a big ask for a kid who's never played right tackle and just make that transition in the NFL. I don't know if people can appreciate it because just because you played left doesn't mean you can play right. And just because you play right doesn't mean you can play left. You know, it's it's like linebacker. It's like, like Lil Mack is the most incredible player I've ever evaluated coming out of college. He could play inside, outside, and defensive end, and he looked like all world at all three, which was just like incredible. But he'll open his hips up a little bit at times. And he'll, he'll give the corner a little bit. And with these guys, you can't give them anything. I mean, you got to be your most buttoned up against these two because they're so good. Um, they have so many different ways to attack you. Um, so, but I, you know, I'm sure that from a scheme wise, Arthur Smith is not an idiot. He knows what he's doing. I mean, that's one thing. If, if you watch us, he knows how to protect quarterback. He knows how to maximize the guys he's got. You know, I don't, I don't see them putting Justin Fields in a position where he's going to be vulnerable very much. Now, there's going to be times you got to ask guys to block. I'm not saying that, but you can do some stuff scheme wise and play calling wise that can hold those guys at bay a little bit. But there's going to be those times where you got to block, and you're going to have to make that happen. So, obviously, with these edge players, they are really, really good, and I'm really impressed with the Chargers' tackles. But staying out of third and yeah. long is going to be pivotal for both these teams. Which team is more better equipped to stay out of third and long? Well, I think the Chargers are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I just I kind of watched them. You know, their running game, they, you know, they built on the running game. You know, they, their first week, they were just inside zone, inside zone. You know, then they, they brought some. Um, some wham stuff, and that might have been specifically for what the Panthers had. You know, I, I don't know. It, that, that one's hard to tell, you know. But they added a little to their running game. They, but they're very versatile, you know. They they do seem to want to attack you inside zone wise. Seems to be their their strength and what they like right now. It's more only week two. Um, and their passing game, you know, week one it was a really 
quick. In fact, and I almost, I almost thought they're, they're treating the quarterback like he was a rookie, the way that they had dialed stuff up. Now that evolved, then they then they opened it up a little more against the Panthers, and they started doing half field reads, a little some more explosive stuff, a little more run action stuff, and, and taking shots down the field. Um, with the Steelers, I think they will be um, somewhere closer to the Raiders just because um, of their edge rushers. You know, you, you, you don't want that quarterback in that in that pocket too long. You know, the ball's got to come out. And, you know, when they do, like they, the run action stuff, when they take their shots, I think that's what you'll see because you can get max protection and you can give uh, either or. So you, you can double both guys and just get a two-receiver route. Which the which I that's what I would anticipate when they take shots they'll do. Let's talk about the uh, the Chargers tackle specifically uh, Joe Alt the rookie right tackle. Uh, they call him uh, Control Alt the lead out there. <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, handle Max Crosby. Can he handle T.J. Watt? Hey, where was that kid from? Notre Dame. Okay. The, um, his dad was, was a uh, big, real good player in the league for ten years. John, or whatever, to, John yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I was, there's actually so many good tackles. That's why I asked. I'm like, I get, I get these these guys lost because um, the kid in Oregon State, which I who was a right tackle. That's why I was, I was thinking him mm-hmm. actually. Um, who was that dude was a beast. Anyway, yeah. Old had um, to switch sides too. He was a left at Notre Dame. They're playing him at right. Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, well, he was a left. Yeah, at Notre Dame. So I was like, well, that's that's somewhat interesting. But anyway. Um, listen, TJ Watt is a, a special football player. I know you were talking about not being, you know, not letting him hit the quarterback and sack the quarterback, but um, you, you, he's going to play every down. I mean, I love what TJ Watt does when he doesn't get a sack, quite honestly. The plays he makes when he doesn't make the tackle, the things that he does that helps, that's just good sound football. Um, that's what I love about him. That he's going to set the edge. He's going to make tackles. He's going to blow things up. He's going to constantly penetrate. He's going to. Be, he's just a constant. He's a disruptor on every play, and that will be. Even I don't care how good a rookie is. That that's a lot to ask. You know. Um, you know. That's why Fatano. You know. He's he's got his hands full. You know. But both guys. You know. From a skill set in college to the NFL was pretty unique and special. And you can see how they've played now. There's not a lot of – you can't tell how, how young they are unless you really study them hard and you just see little things that they will get clearly better on. Um, it would be interesting, though, which guy breaks down fundamentally because I think that's probably where it comes down to is when those moments you have to block a guy, you don't have help, you don't have a chip. And you just don't break down fundamentally against those pass rushers. Because if you do, they're going to get you. Well, I think people might be surprised the way the Chargers are playing. They have Herbert, who is a perceived franchise caliber quarterback. Uh, Average close to 300 yards a game his first couple years, 275 and change his first four seasons this year. uh, Under 150 both games. But this team has been built by Harbaugh to play Harbaugh football, has it not? I mean, all these tight ends and uh, the line and, and the great running backs, um, they're, they're, yeah, doing, well, you know, they're doing what they should with what they have, correct? Because much like the Steelers, there's not an overabundance of great wide receivers on this team. No. Um, true story. You know, and I, you, you can I, – uh, is it Roman? I, I forget their offensive coordinator. But, you know, their offensive it coordinator. is Roman, yeah. Yeah, okay. He- heavy Ravens so, influence to say the least. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, just just so people know. I mean, they got their offensive coordinator from the Ravens, and so, and I've I've talked to him many times, and he, I he is just you talk about a, a guy who knows the running game in depth that is just like I was just sitting there in awe going wow, and we just and then we start talking about Chuck Noll and the trap game, and you know could you bring that back? And we start going, we started going off the of, off the charts where you'd be like. Most people probably bored, but I was like, you know, the guy's fascinating. You know, um, that's why their running game is wicked. They're committed to it. You can tell they're committed to it. They decided that a long time ago when that staff came together. That's why, you know, I'm sure that they're going to have something for the Steelers. The things that we, I just mentioned I saw, I clearly expect. You know what I did not see, which I was actually surprised. Not the wrong news. He was foundationally a power O guy. You know, the power was like the one of the most physical runs, 
that exists in football. Okay, and in fact, I went to Chicago when I was there. Like we were committed to that. And when somebody's committed to that, I'm not. To me, that means they they mean business. That means they're, they're going to run the football. They ain't just putting this in just to put it in. It's putting it in because they're like, this is who we are. I didn't see much of that, you know. And I don't know why that is, you know. Now that could be the thing you see this week, you know. Um, I'm sure they have more that they're going to add to because they do a lot. You know, I like they run the strong side and the weak side too. You know, they're they're not they're not heavy on right or left. They're not heavy on strong or weak, um, especially after two weeks. I, they probably have very few tendencies that you can really 